Well, for a couple of years now, Lori Watson has been coming over and always so excited when she does because she wanders around her beautiful nursery, Mill Creek Greenhouses, yeah. which is on Leesburg Road in Columbia. <laughs> and that's out near the Veterans Hospital. Mm -hmm. And um, there are signs that tell you which way to go. And um, even I can do it, so you can do it too. And Lori, of course, didn't have any trouble getting us up because we're easy to get yes, to. Very but, easy. Um, and Lori, you have traditional plants, but you've also been kind of venturing out into native plants and some more mm -hmm. unusual things. And so I think some of the first ones we're going to talk about that um, are going to fit in that native plant category. Right. Um, Baptista, oh. uh, Purple Smoke, wonderful perennial this year. I or think false people, indigo. False indigo. Yeah. And mm -hmm. people are really starting to catch on to this because it's long lived, it's strong, it's vigorous, the clump gets better every year. Um, it's just beautiful. It comes out a little tough and then it's, it's going to flower now. Many different flower colors too. Oh, yeah. Uh, they, they come out the white. Um, Yellow. Yellows. The blues. Soft yellows, blues, a little bit darker. And, um, and you know, you can tell this is a tough plant because where I live, when I travel up to Columbia and go through Sandy Run and places like that, I see that on those sandy soils, which just gives you an indication. The white of, Baptista? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that's just a gives you an indication one. of how... Um, well it does and how well it would do in your own garden with some mm -hmm. care. And as we see, it's coming up really early. Yeah, it really is. My, my grouping early. in my backyard is probably about this tall. Ah, yeah. so, Beautiful yeah. plant. Mm -hmm. And then it has those seed pods that kind of look like expanded pop um, peanuts, don't you think? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It does. And pretty easy to um, mm -hmm. give those to friends and they can propagate from right. those. Uh -huh. yeah. Baptisia false indigo. Yeah. Uh, just a gorgeous plant and one that's completely without any problems whatsoever. Yeah. And then isn't this just one of the most charming things yeah, you've so ever I've seen? I've really oh. learned to love this over yeah. the last couple of years. It almost looks like a rhododendron, the big Doesn't fluffy it? leaves. Yeah. yeah. Leathery but it's an almost. anise called Miss Scarlet because um, of the, the flower color. It's just such a pretty Beautiful. red. It hangs. Beautiful. And um, the old anise alyssum that my mother had and that I have is, you know, 25 feet tall and 15 feet wide. Um, but it, they all have that wonderful leaf that when you crush it has that wonderful has that fragrance. Yeah, yeah, that delicious kind of um, oh, herby. Yeah. yeah, wonderful. I love it. Well, I do too. Yeah. But, um, but this one I think is going to keep its size very nicely. Dense, compact, five, five feet. Mm -hmm. And I think the color is a deeper green than some of the other species. It's yeah, you're beautiful. right. It does yeah. sort of look up. Yeah. Although I think you've come on one time and there's even, and, you, and I've got one that I got from you that has a um, almost a chartreuse color. Yes, and they have another one now called Banana Appeal uh -huh. that stays a little more compact. Yeah, and that's fun because with the new yards we have that are smaller, um, the plant breeders are giving us things that so we can have some of the favorite things that our parents had and we can bring them to our, into our new small yeah, landscapes. Right. Yeah. But that one is just easy as pie and can take shade. It really is. Yeah, just beautiful. And a lot oh. of water. Likes yeah, water. a lot of water. And then this is not going to be a, a woody perennial, but this plant has a real point to, ha to grow because you said last year it just never stopped having pollinators. Yeah, it was a great basil. Um, it's a, it doesn't seed, uh -huh. so it just continues to flower, flower, flower. It puts all its energy into being a beautiful plant. I mean, and you can still cook with it. It's mm -hmm. just maybe not as sweet. And it's a purplish as a sweet basic. one. Uh -huh. and, the, and the flowers are a deep purple, but the pollinators it tracks. Oh. Um, I had it under tomatoes, and it was beautiful. I mean, it flowered almost up until December. And then if you wanted to have a tomato sandwich, you could just get some of these leaves yeah. and have the Put tomato that on sandwich. There. Yeah, but yeah, it's it either goes by African blue or Kesar. Okay. K -A -S -S and it doesn't overwinter, but people who are good at doing things could put it in a greenhouse probably and keep it. True. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, oh my goodness, what a beautiful Pieris. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rhododendron, Azalea-like companions. In the uh, Heath family, Ericaceae. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then it loves like an understory uh, pines. Uh, it does like moist organic matter. It doesn't like to get completely dry, but it's not water fussy either. So. And when I was coming along back in the day, um, these were did better in the cooler parts of the state, but now this variety is one that can really take some heat, but it does require shade, I believe. Is oh, that correct? absolutely, yeah, here in our climate. And then this one's a pure white. It doesn't it have much pink to it, uh -huh. so that's the prettiness. Well, and also you think that in a shady area, wouldn't that pop mm -hmm. out and just oh, yeah. brighten the shade? Light you know, so many times we're looking for things, how can I brighten the shade? And these flowers are pretty long-lasting as well. Yeah. Yeah, Pieris. And um, so we need to be certain that it does have some organic matter, though. Mm -hmm. It's going to need that to, yes. to perform well. Yeah. All righty. Like and, um, and then, boy, <laughs> talk about a wake-up green. Yeah, I love why. I love it. Um, this is called Aurea, Aurea, um, the gold yellow um, yes. leaves, but it's budded now. It'll have the pink uh, maroon flowers that sort of light it up. 
And Wajila is an old, mm -hmm. big, sprawling kind of woody plant that we'd find in our grandmother's yard. Yeah, the that was covered of flowers when it's flew yeah. in bloom. Yeah. So this will be a gorgeous shrub. It will be, mm -hmm. and completely carefree. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't. I've, the only thing that happens is people um, want to cut it up so much if they're having a big party, right. because it's just so gorgeous. <laughs> but I mean, other than other than keeping the pruners away, but it comes back fine. It doesn't uh, mind, mm -hmm. does it? Not yeah. at all. Yeah. Well, let's go down here because this is a big. It looks like um, somebody got the um, blow dryer to that. And, yeah. just, and gave it a comb You're up right. that never stopped, it's doesn't it? A little zigzaggy there, yeah. but it's a dwarf cherry called Fuji cherry. Fuji, Fuji, Fuji cherry. cherry. Uh -huh. um, and it's got little zigzaggy stems. Um, the crown stays really compact and tight, and the height really is about six to seven feet. Gosh. So it's a really, and it's been blooming here for about three, four weeks. It continues to bloom. It'll turn a little more mauve. Uh huh. So, yeah. And you said it, um, the flowers. Came before the leaves, so right. at that point uh -huh. it was really spectacular. Just twigs and, yeah, and yeah, your uh, yeah. flowers. So, Millions yeah. of flowers. Uh -huh. And carefree? It really is. We've had it twice. This is sort of a shrub form. We had one standardized that was real pretty too. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I think that one's fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, you know, so many people um, don't realize that we have azaleas that are native to mm -hmm. the southeast, and this is an example of a beautiful one. It really is. Our Florida flame azalea. Um, nothing like them, and then when they get huge, they sort of go like a just an open vase, mm -hmm, open mm -hmm. vase, and glorious when just in bloom. Um, they are doing a lot of hibernizing now on these deciduous azaleas, ones that take a little more humidity and heat, um, bigger flowers, stronger fragrance. But there's nothing like the, the native. There is no stronger <laughs> fragrance than what I'm going to pull out in my hat tonight. Let me oh, tell okay. you. <laughs> Because I've got the native pink one. Oh, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. That, that we collected in the woods near our house yeah. a long time ago. But these are just beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, I like to use them kind of against the woodland. Don't you? Th I mean, that's where I have mine, so mm -hmm. that they get kind of some shade in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah. you get a little bit of sun. And, um, and for those of you who haven't been to Swan Lake, this would be a great time to come because we've really installed a lot of the native azaleas in the um, fragrance garden there, and they are just in glorious bloom. So come over and see us at Swan Lake. It's open every day of the year, and, um, and it doesn't cost a thing, and you get to be in this glorious city of Sumter. But um, to continue, we're going to move down here, and this is kind of... You know, we used to talk about this, and there was some other oh, cultivars, but this is a new one, and I think has a great color. Mm -hmm, the, the Hypericum, Hypericum. blue velvet, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, it gets about three by four, sort of a mound. Good size, uh -huh. yeah. Um, the leaves came out really quick for, know, for this winter. They yeah. really did. They were blue green. They've gotten a little bit green, but, but it I can has still a see that cast. bluish cast. Mm -hmm. It's very pretty. And then tell me about it's going to have lots of flowers. Yeah, midsummer single yellow flower attracts a lot of pollinators. And then those will turn to berries for the fall, the mm -hmm. red berries for mm -hmm. our fall and winter. And I think it's so great to have something in midsummer for pollinators because sometimes that's the time where they really are kind of, you know, everything is kind of over and you're kind of waiting and you're in sure. between series. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think um, Sean said we could show your website so that people can get your information. And um, so um, tell us exactly what your address and all that kind of stuff is. Oh, the address, um, mm -hmm. 2324 Leesburg Road in Columbia. And our website is millcreekgreenhousescolumbia.co. And what's the best way to find out when y'all are open? Because some... Um, yeah, our Facebook page. Facebook, okay. It leads you right to our website. Great, And then okay. we have an email that we put out once a week. Okay, so, yeah. wonderful fun. Well, thank you for coming yeah, to see us. Yeah, it's fun. Always Watson. fun to be here. Yeah, we're glad you came.